the International Space Station is dying. But that's okay because NASA has a plan to replace it. Or at least they did. But that new plan now appears to be failing miserably. We know the truth about NASA's new space station and it will surprise you. Up until last month, Axiom Space appeared to be our next best hope for the future of living and working in low Earth orbit, a private company with a significant amount of NASA experience on their payroll and a healthy injection of funding from both NASA contractors and investors. They also had a pretty solid concept. Axiom would simply build their station on the back of the ISS, adding one module at a time until Axiom Station was fully functional and self-sufficient. Then, as the ISS begins its descent down into a fiery oblivion, Axiom continues the chain of human habitation in space, unbroken. Anyway, it turns out that the same guy who managed the construction and operation of the ISS for NASA really sucked at running a private company. This is Michael Sufredini. He worked at NASA for three decades and served as the program manager for the International Space Station from 2005 to 2015, and he personally oversaw the station's transition from assembly to operation. In 2016, Mike teamed up with billionaire Cam Gafarian, who was the head of NASA's second largest engineering services contractor, responsible for training NASA astronauts and handling operation of the ISS. Gafarian also co-founded the moon landing company Intuitive Machines and the satellites maker Quantum Space. Mike would serve in the role of Axiom CEO, and Cam would be a rich guy doing rich guy stuff. So that doesn't sound like the kind of pair who would completely blow this. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Everything. The trouble began to show itself in August 2024, when Mike suddenly announced he was stepping down as CEO for unidentified personal reasons. That is never a good sign. In his absence, Cam was upgraded to temporary CEO, and that was a terrible idea, because a month later, Cam decided to sit down for an interview with Forbes magazine, which was then published as an article under the headline, This Billionaire's Startup Wanted to Build a Space Station. Now it can barely pay its bills. Which is, Cam, my dude, I love the honesty and everything, I really do, but why on earth would you just straight up tell the media that you are broke and you can't actually build the thing you're supposed to build? And if you thought that was weird, it gets even worse. So how did this go so wrong? Well, Axiom was founded with the intention of building the world's first commercial space station, and the plan at the time was to launch the first station module in 2020. The company then secured a top-tier contractor to build the bones of their station design, Thales Alenia, a legendary Italian manufacturing operation who also built half of the core modules of the ISS. Axiom even started a side hustle flying private citizens to the ISS on board the SpaceX Crew Dragon vehicle. There have been three Axiom commercial crew flights, with a fourth scheduled for spring 2025. Now, it's nearly the end of 2024, and that module still isn't done yet. It's almost done, but Axiom may never actually get their hands on it because they haven't been paying the contractor they hired to build it for them. Apparently, Axiom has been having trouble paying anybody for quite some time now. According to the report from Forbes, Axiom started having payroll shortfalls dating back to at least early 2023. On top of that, the company has fallen behind on payments to key suppliers, including Thales Alenia and SpaceX. Which makes it pretty awkward watching this video published by Axiom three months ago featuring workers and engineers on the Thales production floor showing off all of the work that they haven't been paid for. So, here's a question. If all of the work so far on the space station has been done by a contractor, then why does Axiom have 1,000 of their own employees that they also can't pay? Just as we rely on the facts and evidence to understand the universe around us, staying informed about what's happening here on Earth can feel like a daunting task. With media bias and misinformation on the rise, it's hard to know what to trust. That's why I've turned to Straight Arrow News. Straight Arrow News is an app and website designed to deliver news without bias. 
whether it's world events, politics, or science news like the incredible space missions we cover here, SAN makes sure you're always in the know. I've been using SAN to stay up to date on the latest global events and it's quickly become my go-to source. I love that they focus on factual reporting so I know I'm getting balanced information. Whether I'm catching up on headlines or doing deeper dives into important issues, Straight Arrow News is raising the bar on how we get our news. Go to san.com slash space race or download the Straight Arrow News app today. You can find the link in the description below, and by checking it out, not only are you supporting me, but you're also supporting a team of dedicated journalists who are working hard to bring you the truth. This is where Mike gets thrown firmly under the bus, and we figure out what the unidentified personal reasons really were. You see, it turns out Mike didn't do so well with the transition from public to private sector management. The Forbes article says that CEO Michael Sufredini, who spent 30 years at NASA, ran Axiom like a big government program instead of the resource-constrained startup it really was. His mandate to staff up to 800 workers by the end of 2022 led to mass hiring so detached from product development needs that new engineers often found themselves with nothing to do. Now, what does this mean for Axiom Station? Well, like we said, the pressure shell for the first habitation module is almost complete, and it's being made by the best in the world, as long as the bills get paid. But even still, there is a lot more work that needs to be done before this thing can get off the ground. The purpose of this first module is to provide living quarters that support four crew members, plus some extra volume for them to perform some small-scale research projects. The first thing that you'll notice about the Axiom crew quarters is that they provide a much higher level of comfort than the existing ISS. The individual pods are more reminiscent of those Japanese capsule hotels and give each Axiom crew member a private room with touchscreen monitors, LED lighting, and their own window with a view of the Earth. These sleeping pods were designed by the French architect Philippe Stark, who says that he was inspired to create a nest, a comfortable and friendly egg which would feature materials and colors stemming from a fetal universe. Whatever that means. Anyway, all this stuff won't be quick and easy to install, not if they're going to keep it looking like the render at least. Currently, Axiom is still hopeful that they'll take delivery of the Hab1 shell in 2025 at their facility in Houston, Texas. From there, the final assembly will be completed, with a hopeful launch date no earlier than late 2026. This Axiom module would then dock to the forward port of the ISS Harmony module and become a permanent fixture of the space station. That is step one. Then we get to Axiom HAB2, which was expected to launch one year after HAB1 and would be more or less a double of the first module that extends the total crew capacity to eight people in the Axiom segment of the ISS. This second module will also provide an independent life support system to the Axiom segment and will include a Canada Arms-style robotic manipulator. The Axiom Research and Manufacturing Facility comes next. That is going to dock to the side port of HAB2 to start forming an L-shape, and the idea with this one is to provide access to the unique microgravity environment of low Earth orbit as a platform to conduct innovative research, product development, process improvement, and manufacturing. The finishing touch of Axiom Station is going to be a power thermal module. This serves as an extra storage and payload space, but more importantly is going to be linked into Axiom's dedicated solar panel array to power the segment and handle climate control. With these four modules and one extremely fancy window, the Axiom segment of the ISS can now detach from the main station and operate as a standalone platform. Now remember that the ISS is scheduled to be pushed from the sky by a souped-up dragon vehicle and explode into chunks of flaming debris. That is supposed to happen in the year 2030, and for about a year prior to that, NASA plans to allow the station's orbit to naturally decay and slowly fall down towards the Earth. So with all of that in mind, don't feel bad if you've lost faith that anything we just showed is actually getting built, because guess what? Axiom themselves have to. Apparently the company's new plan, according to Forbes, is to downsize the heck out of their ambitions. Instead of a four-module station that would be separated from the government-operated space station by 2030, Axiom is likely to go forward with a smaller station consisting of just two elements. 
this station would have lower power and reduced commercial potential, according to the article. So what they would do is launch the HAB-1, then build a smaller and less capable power thermal module, and hopefully get that up into orbit before the whole ISS starts to come down. This would give Axiom something that I guess could be loosely referred to as a space station. It would be about the same size and usefulness as those old Salyut modules that the Soviets were operating back in the 70s, and that would be better than nothing, but it's not great. It's definitely not what NASA paid for when they awarded Axiom a $140 million contract in 2019. And in all honesty, it's not just Axiom who dropped the ball with this whole space station thing. In 2021, NASA awarded contracts to three companies. Blue Origin, NanoRacks, and Northrop Grumman valued at between $125 million and $160 million. The deal was to begin preliminary work on their own commercial space stations that NASA could use in a post-ISS landscape. Northrop Grumman quit. They're just not even trying anymore. NanoRacks got bought out by Voyager Space, and Blue Origin is doing what they do. Talking a lot, delivering, not very much. So NASA already has plans to try again next year. The administration will issue a request for proposals for the second round of commercial space station contracts in 2025 and make an award in 2026. It's believed that NASA would like to award at least two companies in this second phase. We know that SpaceX has plans to submit their own proposal this time around, likely a Starship-based orbital platform. As for Axiom, our boy Cam has been doing his best to walk back the reporting published by Forbes. He claims that the article painted an inaccurate picture, but he also hasn't said that there are any inaccurate claims in the reporting. One other really fascinating aspect of this story is that we can see Axiom never made any money on their SpaceX side hustle the paid trips to orbit actually lost them millions of dollars. They still owe SpaceX $670 million for four flights on Crew Dragon, each of which includes a launch and ride for four astronauts to and from the station for a period between one and two weeks. This equals out to $167.5 million per launch or $41.9 million per seat, if you've ever wondered exactly how much it costs to fly SpaceX. But hold on, there is one positive to come out of this madness, and it's from Axiom's other line of business, spacesuits. You might be wondering what all the financial mismanagement means for the Artemis program lunar EVA suits that NASA ordered from Axiom with a $228 million development contract last year. Well, according to the Forbes report, this initiative has actually pulled resources away from the space station program, showing that the suits are probably considered a higher priority at the company. So, while we probably will never see a real space station from Axiom, they might still help people to walk on the moon, and that is pretty cool. <laughs>